Good morning. I'm excited to be here with you today. It is uh, spring is in the air and here at least in Arizona. And I am just so pumped. A lot of good things happening. Uh, still an incredible time to be selling real estate. And this just gets me charged up. So let me share my screen so we can dig on in today. How was everybody's weekend? Who sold a house this weekend? Who sold two houses this weekend? Or did something super cool and incredible? I want to hear about it. You know, one of the things we do here at Zoodelio is we have morning huddles with the team and we talk about our wins. And I just believe it is so important to celebrate those successes so we can neurologically program ourselves for more success. So if you had something cool happened, happen and uh, make sure you take some time and celebrate that because you deserve that. Oh, good. Good job. So we've got Deborah, one house. Julie got one listing. Good job, ladies. I love it. I love hearing about those good things. Where are you listening from today, Deborah, Julie? Uh, where are you guys listening in from? I would love to, to know what markets we got on the call today, who we repping out there. Sorry, I got to silence my Slack notifications as well because they're going off here and I'm not sure if you guys can hear those. So just give me one more moment. All right, Slack should be silenced and I think I can now share my screen and we can begin. Quick recap of what we are gonna go over today. A uh, kind of a quicker call today, but I'm gonna leave you with some uh, really cool scripts. We're gonna go through some video scripts today, as you can see, and I think that's gonna be awesome. Uh, empower you to get out there and make some cool content. I'm gonna go over a little bit of the iBuyer report that just came out last week. Of course, Sudilio, gotta keep you abreast on what is happening in the iBuyer space. We're gonna take a look at the iBuyer market share nationwide. And then we're gonna go through some consumer preferences. We're gonna talk about what do sellers want. I'm gonna kind of give some insights that I pulled from NAR, and we're gonna look at some Google Trends, some Google Autofill. And as I mentioned, we're gonna talk a little bit about video, uh, and we're gonna talk about video scripts. I've got a few scripts for you that we're gonna go through. I think it's gonna be really great for you to take those and implement those into your business. And then as always, I'm gonna leave you with a parting question. Hey, I am here to help you bridge that gap from where you are to where you wanna be. And so as you're listening to today's call, if you, you know, have questions about implementation or how to please throw that into the chat, into the comments uh, so that we can really serve and support you at the highest level. All right, let us dig in to the iBuyer report. I love when this report comes out. I'm always just fascinated to see this model grow. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am in the birth of iBuying. I'm in the Phoenix market. All three of the iBuyers, even though Zillow has exited the business, but Open Door started here. OfferPad started here. When Zillow was making offers, they started here. We've seen it all. We saw it first. Now, iBuying is not a new concept. What's the new concept is this retail iBuying, as I like to see it, these corporate iBuyers coming in with the sophisticated technology and these instant offers, and they're offering this digital sale online. So it's been really incredible to watch this spread like wildfire throughout the country. And so here are the top five iBuyer markets. I'm going to show you the top 20 as well. So you can see that. So if you don't make the top five, don't despair. You're probably on the top 20 markets. We'll get to that as well. Uh, kind of an astounding number of homes that were sold to iBuyers um, last year. And so this report is very telling of, of what's to come, I believe. The, the fifth market, and this is by actual homes purchased, so not market share. I'm going to give you some insights on that market share uh, as well. But as you're looking at these slides, just to give you some context, the top five markets are based on homes purchased. So five was Houston. Uh, Texas is a really big iBuyer 
state, a lot of I buyer activity in Texas, and a lot of the homogenous housing markets work very, very well for this model. We are seeing the model kind of grow and expand to maybe more of the niche products as well. So uh, just if it's not homogenous in your area does not mean that there's not tremendous growth potential for this model. So in Houston, it looks like 1,192 homes were purchased last quarter. That's one quarter, guys. It's a lot of homes, a lot of homes. It represented about 4.4% market share. So you may be thinking like, that's not that much market share. But what is incredible is that these companies, this representative of only three companies out there in this retail iBuying space, Zillow even exited. So to see these numbers kind of continue to remain very strong, it's telling, it's indicative of what's to come in the future. So we have number four, Charlotte came in at number four uh, with 1,208 homes purchased. So quite a few homes in Charlotte were purchased by iBuyers. That represented 8.6% market share. So 8.6, I mean, you know, think about this. This is a company, these are companies that have only been around for a couple of years and they've already been able to come in and gobble up 8.6% market share. And Charlotte, if you're in Charlotte and you're not using Zudelio, you need to be, uh, is just a no brainer. You have this happening in your marketplace. Number three is Dallas. Dallas Fort Worth came in at number three with 1637 homes, and that represented 5.8% market share. So again, Texas, big iBuyer hub. You got a lot of institutional activity happening there. Uh, number two, my hometown, Phoenix. This is where I am at, people. Uh, Zudelio is headquartered in Gilbert, which is a suburb of Phoenix. And, and I live in Queen Creek, which is another suburb of Phoenix. A wonderful, wonderful place to live, wonderful place to sell real estate. But we have a ton of iBuyer activity here in the Phoenix market. So 2,300 homes were purchased and it represented about 8.8% market share. So Wow, a lot of market share being taken up by these iBuyers here in Phoenix. And the number one market, and if you are on the call from this market, you're feeling it, uh, just like we are here in Phoenix, just like other markets are as well. But the number one market for iBuyer activity in quarter four was Atlanta. So Atlanta came in at number one. They had 2,631 homes purchased last quarter institutionally, and that represented 8.9% market share. So really interesting to see these markets and just to see how this market share kind of continues to creep up. You know, one of the things that I hear often is, you know, hey, these iBuyers will never be able to gain meaningful traction. They'll never be able to really prove this at scale. And these numbers are showing that they're doing it. And so, yes, I know that both Open Door, uh, you you know, Open Door has lost quite a bit of money, quite a bit of money last year. But I think that it is important to understand that these companies are designed to lose money. Now they're investing heavily in infrastructure, heavily in technology. And I think that what we're going to see over the next quarters and years to come is that shift towards profitability, where offers probably won't be as competitive as they have been. So that's kind of a key indicator that I'm really uh, looking out for, which I really believe our Cash Offer Plus product can really help you kind of get that competitive edge in those situations. And then I mentioned I was going to share the top uh, 20 markets with you so that you could just get an idea, you know, if you weren't the top five, kind of where did you fall? So here are the top 20 uh, metro markets. You know, one thing interesting to note is Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, was the only metro that just kind of exceeded 10% market share of iBuyers. They had 11% market share of iBuyers. So we know that this value proposition is enticing, right? I want to show you kind of how the market share stacked up quarter by quarter last year. So these are the 2021 quarters. And if you take a look here, you'll see that first quarter of 2021, we had 0.6 market share. 
of, of iBuyer activity. And so we didn't even cross the 1% threshold in quarter one. Quarter two, we did a little bit more, 1% market share. But check out what happened in quarter three and quarter four. Uh, market share in quarter three went to 1.9%. And in quarter four, we are, we're at 1.7% nationally of these three big iBuyers. So you got to think that you know, the numbers that we're seeing here are only representative of open door offer pad and Zillow. So we still, we know Zillow got out of the game. They quit purchasing Uh, about October, I believe is when they, or was it early November when they put their kind of hold on acquisitions? And then a couple of weeks later, they announced, Hey, we're getting out of this space. But I was pretty surprised to see that we still had 1.7% market share with them exiting that quarter. So it didn't appear to impact the numbers. So maybe those individuals that were they're wanting cash offers and couldn't get one from Zillow went and found some otherwhere. So let's take a look at the total homes sold uh, last year. I'm sorry, the total homes purchased last year by iBuyers was 70,402 homes. So, you know, you may be thinking, uh, wow, I know I certainly was. We doubled from 2020. So there was double the amount of homes sold. So if you can imagine, like if we keep even on pace for half of that, what that number could look like in a couple years. It could be very high, many, many, many homes. And as we looked last week uh, at some of the shareholder notes from Open Door CEO uh, Eric Wu, he believes that millions, we'll get to the millions uh, in this, this kind of space and that homeowners are going to want to do this and they're going to want to do it online. And I don't necessarily disagree. I mean, millions may be a, a stretch considering if we're doing, you know, let's call it not quite, but let's call it almost 7,000 transactions. I'd say millions is a stretch, but I could see this number increasing uh, quite a bit And so I think what is important for us is we're looking at our business and we're looking at ways to grow and scale. And, you know, here's the thing, if if you're crushing it in real estate, what do you want? You want more time, right? You want, you want more freedom. And so this is also a way for you to achieve that in your business. So we're going to kind of unpack today. What are sellers looking for? What do sellers want? What do they want in that realtor? What do they want to help them through that process? And, you know, I love to focus on sellers. Uh, Not everybody would agree with me, but I believe that he who has the listings will last. If you get the listings, you are going to make it, right? You're going to crush it in this market. If you get the listings, you're going to be really busy, but it's going to be really amazing because everybody goes to that listing agent. You're going to get more buyer opportunities that way. If you're looking to grow a team, you're going to have more visibility in your marketplace. And so getting the listings is where it's at. So let's focus today on sellers and what do sellers want and how can we serve and support them so that we are their go-to in the marketplace. But we don't need to look too hard to really unpack the kind of changing consumer demands. And so one thing I want to show you is NAR's profile of home sellers. I think this is the, the this is a great way to look and say, okay, what did the National Association of Realtors discover when they went out and they surveyed recent home sellers? And when they asked home sellers, what are you looking for in your real estate agent? You can see here that the number one thing that home sellers want from the their realtor, 22% of all sellers, they want help selling their home within a specified time frame. I mean, it's so simple. You know, they want help selling their home in a specified time frame. You know, we asked, they answered. So when I talk about what is your marketing, what is your market to message match, you know. I hope you are addressing on how you can help home sellers achieve the goal of selling their home within a specified time frame. Now, I know that you are probably a fabulous listing agent and you could probably put this home on the market and you could probably achieve this goal for a seller through a traditional marketing uh, channel, such as 
putting it on the MLS. But you can also take advantage of the cash offers and selling solutions available from Zudelio to give them that certain 100% convenient, easy way out. And you can help them sell that home within a specified time frame. You know, it's going to be really interesting when this survey comes around next year and we get to see the results of the 2022 survey, because I think there's a lot shifting, a lot changing in the marketplace. One of the interesting trends I see are the power buyers, right? The turning your buyers into cash so that they can compete and be really competitive against financed offers. And I think that some of that power buying space may help sellers accomplish their goal without them having to list their home first. So it's going to be really interesting to see kind of how this changes. But the beauty is, is you've got it all. You have got it all at your fingertips. And as we're looking at this, uh, look at 16% of home sellers. They want to help find ways to fix up the home and sell it for more. They want to find ways to fix up the home and sell it for more. So, so there are these sellers out there, 16% of them that are looking to get more out of their asset. And so I also think that this is an incredible opportunity uh, for you with Zudelio. I look at our cash offer plus structure to where we, we, with the cash offer plus, it's a cash offer with all of the upside of the open market. It's a fee-based uh, offer, so we charge a service fee, but it's not a margin-based offer. So any upside made on the open market is returned to the seller. How cool is that? Another really neat thing about the offer structure for Cash Offer Plus is we can go in and we can make those little updates or repairs or renovations that are needed in order to maximize the return on investment for the asset. So if the home is in need of some paint and some carpet and some minor stuff, we can do that before we put the home on the open market. So we can help that seller find ways to sell their home for more money. So you have a lot of tools at your disposal that you can use and you can be talking about with your customers and with your clients. Let's see, Evelyn has a question here. Uh, let's see, Evelyn, is that the cash buyer program that we have for buyers? Okay, when I was talking about become a cash offer program, yes, that is for buyers, but I think it solves a need. So if you are a seller and you're also looking to buy, and if you can go make a cash offer on your next home and you don't have to sell in order to do that, then you're really being competitive in the marketplace and you don't have to sell your home in order to do that. So yes, that is the cash buy program. Now the cash offer plus that I was just referring to, uh, with the cash offer plus the seller would still pay for the cost of repairs. So the way the cash offer plus works is it is a structured payout. There is anywhere from six to 12% of the seller's equity that's placed in a secure escrow holdback. Uh, with the closing company. And what happens is, is if some repairs need to be made, we can allocate some of that hold back amount to make the repairs so that we can get that home in just excellent condition. Uh, next Monday, I'm going to bring on an agent that recently did a cash offer plus, and I want them to share their story and kind of share with you the pain points it alleviated for their home seller and how it just was just a really awesome, seamless experience for them. So I think that you're really going to like that and having them on here. Yes, I think it'll be awesome too, Evelyn. So great. Cause it's just not me telling you about it. It's somebody else that can share with you their experience and, and how it went. But I see this product, this cash offer plus product, I see it really being a game changer, especially when we start to see the uh, iBuyer offers become uh, less competitive. You know, they've been great. iBuyer offers have been 
excellent. And, and you'll, you'll even get cash offers, right. That you'll be like, Whoa, why are they offering so much? Well, I don't know if you recall, but a few months ago, I went over how one in five of all of the homes that are sold to iBuyers are being farmed off to institutional um, investors. So private equity, hedge funds, REITs. And so the, all of the REITs and the capital markets are starting to build portfolios of tens of thousands of, of single family homes across America. And they're turning them into long-term rentals. And we have learned that these single family detached homes outperform multifamily in a variety of aspects. So we're starting to see a lot of that uh, money that was previously allocated towards multifamily spilling over into the residential space. And so as realtors, we're going, what is happening? Well, what's happening is, is if the rents are high enough in a market to justify paying over market value, these institutional buyers will do so. And so what I love is if you're on this call, you're likely in one of those markets where you're going to get cash offers that are really good. They're really good. But as that dies down, maybe over the next 12, 18 months, and maybe as open door and offer pad, uh, you know, reach, or attempt to reach, I should say, a profitability, we're going to see their offers be more competitive. And when that happens, sellers are going to be hooked on this value proposition of having an instant out. And you've been able to come in with a cash offer plus where they can get that easy out. They can pay a service fee that's disclosed and palatable, and they know what it is up front. And then they can get all of the upside on the open market. It's just phenomenal. It's a phenomenal value proposition that I see increasing over time. Uh, And it solves these pain points. And so I wanted to show you uh, what NAR said that home sellers want and how you can solve these pain points right now with the tools at your disposal. So something else that I thought was kind of interesting, and if you've ever tried this, um, it's, it's, you know, I love Google autofill, you know, because it's just really Google knows, right? Google knows everything. They know what we think. They know what, what consumers are thinking. And when you go to Google something, it will even give you suggestions based on how that is indexing, based on how frequently something else is Googled after that search term. So if you've ever tried, and this is, I did this at Uh, my home computer last night in Queen Creek, Arizona, and I typed in sell my house. And then I just screenshot it for you. So you could see all of the different strings that uh, consumers are searching when they're searching for sell my house and take a look there. I don't know if you're surprised, but sell my house fast is the first thing that comes up after sell my house, sell my house fast. Phoenix was second. Sell my house fast. Arizona was third. Sell my house for cash was fourth. Do you think, do you think that home sellers that are Googling ways to sell their home, do you think they want a fast home sale? I mean, based on what Google is telling us, yes, yes, they do. Yes, they do. So even even in your listing presentation, when you go in and, and you bring your cash offers and you show them these solutions, I hope your listing presentation answers these questions for home sellers because that is what they're thinking. They may not always tell you, but we can do things like look at the NAR research, look at the Google autofill. You're going to see a second here as I show you Google trends, and we can gain a lot of insights from this. And we can really speak to those questions that sellers have that are lingering in their minds that they may or may not communicate with you. And so be thinking through how you can better implement uh, ways to answer these questions, not only in your marketing, but in your listing presentations and your conversations, and really use these tools to show that you're the one that can accomplish these these needs for them. So let's take a look at, this is Google Trends. And 
I love Google Trends. If you've never played around on it, it's super fun. I would encourage you to do so. It's really easy to find. Just Google Google Trends. You can put in any keyword search you want, and it, Google will tell you uh, what the search activity is for that keyword phrase. Uh, you can also compare it against other ones. And then, of course, one of the things that I love is what I'm showing you here. And that is when you put in a search term. So this was sell my house. When you put that in, Google will tell you what the other terms are that people search for uh, when they search for sell my house. And so I thought this, this is just fascinating. And I've done this before and the results were pretty much the same. Not much has changed. Sellers are searching for how to sell my house fast. Again, that time frame. You know, if you think about it, our real estate market, everybody says, oh, there's no inventory. There's no inventory. We sold almost 7 million homes last year. There's inventory. Inventory is just not sitting on the market. It's showing up and it's going, right? It's kind of like those grocery store shelves that we see right now where there's not much on them. And, and when product is placed, we take it. And the same is with housing. And so it's not that we don't have any inventory. It's just moving so quickly. And even despite how quickly the inventory is moving, home sellers are still searching out solutions for it to be done quickly. See, I don't think that, that sellers want to put their home on the market anymore and just test and see and wait. I think that sellers are, are more educated and, and they're really wanting a faster home sale. So, Sell my house fast was, was the number one related search term. Uh, I thought that some of these other ones were interesting too. So how to sell my house. So how to, right? So as you're thinking through how you can really serve and support your marketplace, be take a picture of this, make video content around these items so that you can share with, with those in your marketplace how they can accomplish these things. Of course, you are the source, you are that knowledge broker. It will all come back to you. Uh, and number five, I thought interesting as well, sell my house for cash. So these were the top the top terms, but let me show you the rising ones because I think that that's important to take a look at as well. Uh, rising terms in relation to sell my house. Uh, should I rent or sell my house? It's up 130%. I think that is a great question to be answering. You know, rents are amazing. We looked at how much rents have increased. Man, Miami, I want to say rents increased like 30 something percent in one year. You know, so we have rents that are skyrocketing and you have home sellers that are considering based on Google trends, should they rent or should they sell? It's probably a good idea to talk about those things. Uh, number four on that list, and this always is one of the, the top or rising terms whenever I do this exercise is, can I sell my house without a realtor? Can I sell my house without a realtor? And here's the thing. Let me let you in on a little secret. If you make content around that, that content will not replace you in your job. No, no, no. That content will only magnetize others to you because you're providing them with value and goodwill and you're showing them the process and you're likely showing them how cumbersome and the idiosyncrasies involved and the expertise that you carry. And you're likely showing them why they shouldn't sell their house without a realtor and why instead they should sell their house with you. So be thinking through content around that because it is always either one of the top or one of the rising terms. And I think that coupled with your cash offerings, if you're in the marketplace and you're educating consumers on, hey, you want a cash offer? Great. You want to list your house? Great. You want to sell your house without a realtor? Great. I'm going to show you how to do it all. And I'm going to guide you through the process of everything 
so that when you're done and you're exhausted because my, you know, 10 minutes of videos that you're going to watch took me, you know, 10 years of expertise and knowledge to create, you're going to be exhausted by the time you watch them. And what's going to happen is you're going to educate people to using you and to getting their mind share. So leads me kind of into what I wanted to kind of focus on for just a few minutes here is videos, video, video, video. You're going to hear me talk a lot about video. Uh, you know, last week when I shared what are the top five things you can be doing this week, one of them was making content. Uh, you know, I really believe that video content is it's where it's at. I think we probably all could agree on that. And not only that, but I think it's the future as well. Uh, some interesting things about video that I want to share that one minute of a video has the impact of 1.8 million words. I, that's a lot of words. I don't know how, how many I say in a day, but I'm pretty sure it would take me days to get to 1.8 million words, but that is the impact of a one minute video. Video has been shown to have a 500% longer staying power in the brain than any other marketing medium. So video not only has carries a ton of impact, but it has staying power in the brain. And what could we all want? What could we all ask for in our real estate business that would really serve us? And that's to be top of mind, tip of tongue. That's what we all want. And if you can build these relationships at scale, using the power of video, be educating people in your marketplace, you will never be displaced by what is happening with these corporate uh, corporate retail eye buyers, with these other corporate um, W-2 companies that are coming in. And mark my word, they're coming into real estate because there's so much opportunity. They see what we make in commissions. It's about $78 billion a year, and they want a piece of that. So they're coming for it. But if you're out there and you're educating your marketplace, they're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. You're going to get it. So, hey, Jean. Thanks for being on here today. Yes, Jean, it is crazy. Yes, get back on videos. Um, you know, I have recommitted to making my video content. And I'm focusing right now on building my short form video content. So for instance, if you were to go to my Instagram, I'm making Instagram reels. I'm trying to really focus in on my niche, which is helping realtors uh, become iBuyers, helping you compete, helping you have that strategic advantage, bringing a online digital solution to home sales also is something I'm super passionate about. So I'm using my Instagram and my reels to grow my reach, but then I also am doing my other videos like my podcasts, et cetera. Uh, so that when people start to watch my content and then they get more curious, then they can do a deeper dive and start to watch the longer form content. So many opportunities in that space for sure. I really believe in short form video content, but what I want to focus on today, because I have a lot of you asking me, in fact, I do one-on-one -on -one calls with members throughout the U S it's super cool, super humbling. We are working with some really amazing high powered teams, brokerages, agents, and one of the questions I get asked all the time is what is a great way to market my cash offers and my website? And I always come back to video. Video is an excellent way to do it. And one of our members, his name is Chris Igo, and he created a funnel with these videos. He posted it in our Zudelio Inner Circle group. So Go, oh, Chris. I was so excited and just so stoked to see you do that. Not only to, to make them, but then to put yourself out there and share them with all of us. And, you know, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy making video content. Uh, you know, I constantly struggle with, oh my goodness, like, 
man, what's my hair look like? You know, is I sound funny? Uh, I could stand to lose a few. You know, I have all of those self-defeating thoughts that come into my head and, and want to make me stop and go back to safety and not make the video and not push that scary red button and hit record and not go live. And I'm constantly struggling with those things. And I think that's part of uh, just the human condition, but I got to share with you. This is the future guys. I'm going to give you four scripts today that you can take and you can use in your business. If you want to be like Chris, you can record each of these videos uh, and then you can set up a Facebook ad funnel because I get asked this question a lot. Like what's a great way to really generate new business using Zudelio. This is a great way to generate new business using Zudelio. Now, before you do this, though, I'm going to just say one thing. Last week, I talked about the cash offer campaign. I've talked about that often. Before you go make videos, if you have not deployed Zudelio to your existing database of of past clients, friends, family, people that know you, like you, trust you, you must, you must. Like that needs to be step number one. Before you go spend money getting new business, let's see if the people that already know you, like you trust you, uh, could benefit from your products and your offerings. So deploy that cash offer um, campaign against your database. I'm just really passionate about it. It works. I get the feedback. I get the feedback from you when you do it. It's always like you're surprised it works worked. No, it worked. It's designed to work. Uh, When we wrote those campaigns and it's a series of texts and uh, emails. And when we wrote them, we wrote them very purposeful. Uh, We wrote them with a lot of knowledge of, of what we've learned over the years for direct response marketing, and they're designed to work. So deploy that before you do anything, before you spend any money. I don't want to see you spend money uh, until you need to. And reviving and revitalizing your database is a great way to get more into your Zudelio system. Once you've done that, you're ready to make these videos. Here are some scripts that you can use. I always say you can take this script, you can tweak it, say it a few times, change what doesn't work for you. But keep it kind of generally the same. And what I mean by that is don't go off on too many tangents. Uh, Don't make it unnecessarily long. Um, These videos are designed to be ran as a target. So you run, for instance, this script, this video, you run this as video number one. And the script is really simple. It's like, hey, do you want cash offers for your home? You can request a cash offer for your home in as little as five minutes on my website. You can get and compare all of your home selling options online in your own offer dashboard. It's easy and might I say even fun. Sell your home the new way, fast for cash without leaving any money on the table. You can even sell your home and lease it back for up to six months. Request your no obligation cash offers today and get ready to review them in your offer dashboard tomorrow. Super simple guys, right? Super simple script. Uh, I just read it out for you. I think it took, I don't know, I wasn't timing, but it's not a very long script. It's fairly quick. Uh, you can always, you know, when I, when I say make these videos, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be super produced. If you go check out what Chris Igo did and what he posted in the Zoo Delio Inner Facebook group, he did add some, some titles and stuff. And if you know how to do that, or if you can send it out to Fiverr and you can orchestrate having that happen, great. You know, maybe even show the offer dashboard. Great. If you want, great. But here's the reality. Like, a simple selfie style video will outperform the video you never do, right? And so keeping it simple and doing something like this and just doing it and starting and getting it out there, it doesn't have to be perfect. And what we found is sometimes that that content that's more real and raw and less produced with the you know animations and the inserts, many times that content outperforms anyway. So 
if you're struggling with, oh man, I don't know. I don't want to make these videos because I just, you know, I'm, I don't have the right equipment. I don't have the right lighting. I don't have the right camera. I don't have video editing software. I don't know how to video edit. Like, don't let any of that hold you back. Like bust out your phone, take this script, bust out your phone and, and just record it. Simple. It can be super simple. Let's see. Hey, Connor offers, some offers can be delivered in, in as little as 24 hours. Yes. So when I say request the offer in five minutes, uh, that is actually going on and entering your address and uploading photos, et cetera. That can be done in as little as five minutes. Uh, very exciting. And since you guys are on this call and you're listening, I will share with you to give you that inside track, but we are working on an update that will allow an instant offer. So it's really cool. And um, it's, you know, it basically when they arrive in their offer dashboard, they can enable an instant offer and it's really neat UI, um, really awesome. And so that is coming and we're super stoked about that. But thanks for your questions. Great questions. All right. Got another video script that I can point you to. So let's say this was your first video. You're going to take this video and you're going to target it on Facebook. You can, you know, create your custom audience. If you have a database, you can upload that database that you're targeting that database. Uh, maybe you're working geographically in an area and you're going to target a 15 mile radius. Uh, keep it simple, right? It doesn't have to be super complicated, but this is video number one. And then what's really awesome about retargeting is now you can use this video as video number two. So if they watch video number one, then they're queued up. And then next time they're sitting and scrolling Facebook and Instagram, they're going to get video number two. And so here is a sample script that you can use for this one. Um, again, really easy. Hey, do you want to sell your house fast or within a specific time frame? Maybe you're considering getting a cash offer from a company like Redfin or Open Door. And like, I get it, right? Like selling a home can be stressful. Getting your home ready for showings and showing your home, having strangers walking through your halls. Ugh. It can all cause a lot of anxiety. So, hey, I'm Kayla Leos with JK Realty. And before you consider selling your home to a cash offer company, um, check out my website. You know, you can get and compare cash offers and you can even lease your home back for up to six months. Go to kaylacashoffers.zoodelio.com and request your no obligation offer today. So that's an example script of video number two. Again, we're keeping it kind of short, kind of punchy, not too long. I'm not sure how, I think maybe that was less than a minute for sure. Uh, so again, another quick script. You can cue this one up to be played if they watch video number one. And also, the Facebook ads manager, just want to side note, Facebook ads manager is changing. It's changing constantly. Uh, not too long ago, Noah did a, a series on how to go in and do retargeting. And so if you want, I can point you to the direction of that video. And then also uh, we are going to record out a series on how you can do this. So if you're thinking, man, I don't know how to use the ads manager uh, to do retargeting, we are going to make that tutorial so that you can, you can get there because these are really powerful, super effective. Hey, Deborah, I will, I will send you these. You can email me Kayla at zudelio.com. And my first name is K-A-L-A. -A. There's no Y. And or we do email out the replay along with the slides. So either way, um, we're gonna get you these scripts that you have them. Evelyn, so yeah, great question. Evelyn had a question on some of the options not being uh, working correctly in the dashboard and not being displayed correctly, right? Like the sell and the lease back because of the structured payout. So with the new offer dashboard update, that is 
going to be corrected so that it's really crystal clear on what's happening with that offer structure. All right, so that was video number two. I got two more for you. Video number three, again, we're running a sequence. So, you know, maybe, maybe they watch video number one and then they watch video number two and now they're gonna get video number three from you. And again, we're gonna target on the punchy things that we know are important to people, selling their home fast, um, maybe timing their next move, et cetera. So this one, super simple script. Do you wanna sell your house fast? and time your next move perfectly. Hey, I'm Kayla Leos with JK Realty. With my cash offer, you can sell your house and even lease it back for up to six months. Curious how much the cash offer would be on your home? Go to kaylacashoffers.sudilio.com and request your no obligation offer today. So again, super simple, uh, keeping it quick. The shorter, the better with these videos. I think our attention spans are like less than a goldfish. So very short attention spans as consumers and we're being inundated with, with stuff. Uh, the other neat thing though, that I just want to remind you is that Facebook is going, their algorithm is going to start serving this up to people that are likely to move. You know, do, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, not too long ago, I want to say maybe two years ago, we can actually target that as an ad set in Facebook. We could target people that were likely to move. It used to be an option. Now HUD came in and HUD said, hey, Facebook, this is not good. Uh, we're violating fair housing with some of the targeting that we could do. And truth be told, we probably were. And so HUD put some massive regulations over Facebook. Uh, so they're no longer allowed to give us that option of targeting the people that are likely to move. However, Facebook knows that still. Facebook wants to keep getting your ad dollar, especially since, especially since they've lost billions from the, the update that Apple did with the hide my email and hide my information uh, option. So Facebook is, is definitely well served to give your ads to the right people and they will do so. It will happen. Uh, it won't happen overnight. Uh, that's another interesting thing I just want to share with you about your Facebook ads that you're running. Uh, I had someone that reached out and said, oh my God, my ad's not performing. Like, what do we do? And I said, all right, let's, let's unpack this. Let's kind of see what's going on. And I learned that they had a budget of $10 a day and they had been running their ad for three days. If you only got 30 bucks in three days, don't do it. Don't even bother. Like, what's the point? Like you got to get serious about this. Like it takes, it takes time and it takes a little bit more than 30 bucks. And so when you're out there and you're doing this, just understand that it needs to run for some time, it needs to run for some time for a few reasons. One of those reasons is so that the algorithm can really prime your, your ads and your offering and show them to the right people. So you got to be a little patient on these. All right, so let's get to the third video here. Oh, fourth, this is the last one. Uh, and again, a little bit longer on this one. And I thought that we could afford for it to be. And the reason is, is because anybody getting this video has already watched three of your other videos. So at this point, uh, you know, they're kind of deep into your ad funnel. And so I figured it could be a little bit longer on this one. So here's the sample script. Hey, just checking in with a quick real estate market update. We're still in a strong market, but with interest rates projected to rise, high inflation and the current crisis in Ukraine, many sellers are thinking that now is the time to cash in on one of the hottest seller markets in history. If you've had any thoughts of selling your home, you may consider these changing market conditions. You may also consider selling your home fast and on your timetable with a cash offer. Request a cash offer on my website, kaylacashoffers.zudelio.com, and skip the showings, repairs, and stress. You can even sell your home and lease it back for up to six months. I'm happy to answer any questions or discuss your unique circumstances. Feel free to reach out. So again, very simple script, 
a little bit longer on this one, but still short, very short. I'm trying to keep them all very short. I hope you're picking up on this um, and great, great videos. Now, here's the thing. If you're wanting to just use these and post them out there on your marketing, you know, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your LinkedIn, on your YouTube, um, make it into a TikTok, go for it, do it. You don't have to run these as ads. You do not. You do not have to do that. Uh, you can make this content and you can push it out there and not have it be an ad and just have it be content that you're posting. So keep that in mind too. I hope that I have really imparted on you today that video is something that you got to be using in your business. If you're not and you start, you're going to see explosive growth. Um, and I want to leave you today with a quick little story because this year has been personally, it's been a personally really rough year for me. I, I got COVID in January, was out for a bit, had a medical emergency in February, was out for a few weeks and had a cold last week. My husband throws his back out the other day and I texted him and I texted him yesterday. I was getting my nails done. I love them. They're very, this is like my go-to color when I want to feel like zest getting my nails done and texting my hubby and I'm like, how's your back? And he's like, oh, I'm icing it. And I'm like, man, this year has, has really been rough on us. And I said to him, I said, it's almost 20% gone. This year's almost 20% gone. Now, thank God the team at Zudelio has been amazing and they have rallied and pushed and we've done incredible things. So, so Zudelio has been rocking and rolling, but you know, for some other personal goals and things that I had planned their table, they were tabled those first couple of months as I was just dealing with being in bed a lot. So I said to Jason, I texted him. I said, this year's almost 20% gone. And within seconds, my husband replies back to me and he says, no, Kayla, there's 80% left. And I was just like, that is hit. This is, this is my, my husband's such a great man. That is one of the reasons why I love him is he is such an optimist. And I take that optimism and I have to reframe and, and just rethink uh, those words in my head. And I thought this quote was great. And I want to leave us with this today. A pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. If you are not where you want to be this year, it's okay. We still have 80% of it left. Still plenty of time for you to achieve those big, hairy, audacious goals. So based on what we reviewed today, uh, what was most useful for you? And then what are three, three action items? I want you to just write them down take that time, give this gift to yourself. What are those three things that you are committed to doing in your business this week? And write them down. Let's get after it. I will be back here next Monday. Um, very excited to bring on uh, a Zudelio member that's used the Cash Offer Plus and share that journey with you. Thank you guys all for being here and I'll see you next week.